I, I want to talk a little bit about our country that we live in, America. And in Psalm 33, verse 12, there's a verse of scripture that you should know if you've been in church any time at all, you should be familiar with this verse of scripture. Psalm 33, 12, it's used a lot this time of year. And uh, the Lord been dealing with my heart this week about this. So look at Psalm 33 and verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Not just a religious nation that has a God. The nation whose God is the Lord, the right God. And the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. I understand that verse of scripture was written primarily to the nation of Israel. I also understand that you can use the scriptural principles that could apply to any nation that's ever been or ever will be. I want to preach this morning on America, our country, America. A lot of people today are against patriotism, even a lot of Christians, because our country is so messed up, they think we shouldn't be patriotic at all, and that's wrong. It is our country. Right or wrong, it's our country that we live in. I'll talk more about that in a minute. And then there's some, there's some others that have gone off the deep end the other way and believe the Constitution is inspired just like the Bible is, and they're wrong. The Constitution is based upon biblical principles, but it is not extra biblical revelation. The revelation of God stopped when John finished the book of Revelation, the unveiling. So as always, you can get off the ditch either, either side, and our job, as always, is to plow a straight line right down the middle. I want to say uh, four things about our country this morning. Now, I want you to listen. You young people, listen. You won't hear this in school or college, most of what I'm going to say, because they become secular. And the teachers, many of them, are being trained now to shy away from any kind of, of um, giving too much credit to God or the Bible in the founding of our country, becoming more and more secular. I want to talk, first of all, this morning about America's foundation. The Bible and Christian principles are the foundation of this country. Now, I know they'll get on the news and they'll say, well, this is the founding father and he's an atheist, and this is the founding father and he's a hypocrite. I know that. I didn't say the founding fathers were all Christians. I didn't say that. You know, listen, I said our country was founded upon biblical Christian principles, and that's easy to prove. It can be proved any day of the week. Columbus said this, Christopher Columbus, quote, it was the Lord that put it into my mind. I could feel his hand upon me. There is no question that the inspiration came from the Holy Spirit. That ought to be taught in every school in this country. They say, well, that's teaching religion. No, it's teaching history. And it should be taught. If they worship the rock, they should teach it and tell our kids how our country was founded. George Washington said, quote, religion and morality are indispensable supports of the United States of America. He said, America can't hold up without religion. When these guys said religion in those days, they were talking about the Christian faith that can easily be proved and holding it up. He said, it is impossible to rightly govern the world without God and the Bible. And he did not say Allah and the Koran. He said God, Jehovah God, and the Bible. Every time they talk about religion, every time they talk about God, they was referring to the God of the Bible that me and you believe and preach. Abraham Lincoln said, quote, the Bible is the best gift God has ever given to man. That ought to be taught in school. John Adams said this. Now listen to me. He said, we have no government armed with power that is capable 
of contending with human passions unbridled by morality and religion. You want me to say that so you understand it? It said that, that there's no such thing as, a, as law that can keep people hemmed up when they're full of the devil. That's what that means. Unbridled human passion. And he said, our constitution was made for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate for any other. You want me to say that so you can understand it? He said, the constitution of the United States was made for people that believe the Bible and it won't work with other people that don't believe it. That's right. And we're seeing that fulfilled in our very day. All the distinctive Features and superiority of our republic are derived from the teaching of Scripture. As a matter of fact, we don't hear it much. You'll hear it, it get the Baptist and their background message that I did here back here a few months ago. It's on YouTube, Baptist and their background. But Baptist preachers and their congregation were instrumental in forming the foundation of our country, the United States. Right down here in Kings Mountain, North Carolina, there was fought in the Revolutionary War. They still have Kings Mountain Park down there and it shows you where that big battle was fought. And they had a, a, they had a big battle and a war down there. And the old, old Ferguson of the British Army, Army uh, uh, former uh, uh, British Army, was stood on top of Kings Mountain and said, you, you people will never win this thing. He said, God Almighty couldn't move me off the top of this mountain. He ought not to have said that, should he? And there's a bunch of Baptist preachers got their congregations, local congregations, to go and fight. And one of them, a uh, the young, young man, his daddy was a preacher. His, great, his daddy, great-grandpa was a preacher named Tidence Lane. They pre preachers got their whole churches together and they swarmed around King's Mountain and some of them stayed at the foot of the mountain and prayed. I'm not saying they were all Baptists, but they were led by Baptist preachers. And they went up and they got that, throwed that old boy off the top of that mountain and they said his foot got caught in the stirrup of his horse and it drug him off down through the country somewhere. And Thomas Jefferson said that that battle in King's Mountain Turn the tide of the Revolutionary War. We also learn about our government. And up in Massachusetts, they passed a law against John Clark, another Baptist preacher. And they tried and got him in trouble. He went and came to America in 1637. In 1638, he founded a Baptist church in a country that he called Rhode Island and he said we're going to try a different form of government that's never been used in the history of our world. It's a government that allows its citizens civil and religious liberty. That means you can believe whatever you want, you can worship whatever you want, you can say whatever you want. Civil and religious liberty. He went back and studied it over in England and he came back and many people don't know this, but George Washington sent James Madison to study the Baptist church and their belief because the Baptist church believed in, in civil liberty. If you don't want to worship, you don't have to. If you don't want to go to church, you don't have to. You have liberty. Every man has a conscience to serve God or not serve God however he wants to do. And James Madison Patrick Henry and John Adams talked to General Washington and they said, I think they've got a hold of something here. And they said, it's never been done before, but they came up with what we know as the Bill of Rights. And the Bill of Rights is what gives you freedom of speech. The Bill of Rights came up by, by people studying the Bible and religious and civil liberties gave them nuts in California the right to believe whatever they want to believe or in Washington, D.C. And they still have that, and I respect their rights. They should respect ours. But these Baptist preachers came up, and they, and they said this. He said, I think it'll work. And they adapted it in Rhode Island, and it wasn't long until every state in the union had adopted that form of government, which means that the, our Baptist forefathers and Christians who were not Baptist were responsible for the setting up of the government of the United States of America, ladies and gentlemen. I, you, you, you can't explain it no other way. We're right beside Canada, and it ain't much. 
We're right beside Mexico and it ain't much. And I'm not being critical. There's some good things in those countries. You can't open your mouth nowadays without somebody flipping their lid. But why has God blessed America? Why has America got all the blessing? Because uh, Mexico's Catholic and, and, and heathen and Canada's got off the deep end and God blessed America. There's only one explanation and that is the foundation of this country was built upon that book and upon the Christian faith. And I'm telling you, our nation has had the right foundation. Say amen right there. America's foundation. I want to talk secondly about America's faith. America's faith. America's faith was produced by the free uh, preaching and teaching of a King James Bible. We had circuit riding Methodist preachers right up and down this country preaching what they call the old circuit riding Methodists. They had the great revivals and the Baptist built churches everywhere and reaped their converts. But they were those old circuit riding Methodist preachers. I mean, uh, 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 Cartwright and, uh, and George Whitfield, uh, John Wesley, some of those old preachers were not. Then it came up to Mordecai Ham, C.T. Studd, Robert Sheffy, and then, of course, to Billy Sunday, the J. Frank Norris, right on down to our generation of the big church, soul-winning churches, of, uh, Dr. Seitler and Chowler and Chattanooga and Hiles and Dr. Ruckman and all the, the Ralph Sexton and, and, all, and Phil Kidd and all these great. You know where they got their beginning? They got it way back yonder from George Whitfield. That's where we got the mourner's bench, the altar of prayer. That's where we got the, uh, uh, the shaking of hands and fellowship, them old Methodist circuit riding Methodist camp meetings. They'd jump up and down. They'd clap their hands. They'd go shouting off in the woods somewhere. I mean, the Holy Ghost of God sent revival. America has produced more preachers, more missionaries, put out more gospel tracts. And if you want to know one of the reasons why God has not already dropped the ax, it's because they're still in this country Thank God this morning a bunch of people scattered out that love the Lord with all their heart and are willing to give and sacrifice and send the gospel out around this world. I'm telling you, our country had some faith and there's been a lot of people in this country that's had faith. Thank God an old preacher named Joe Parson came to Nebo Baptist Church and the power of God fell and I got saved by the grace of God. And everybody in here, you ought to thank your lucky stars. That's a bad term. You ought to thank God every day of your life that you've been exposed to old time religion and old time Bible preaching and old time. The world will pull you the wrong way, buddy. It'll suck you in and drown you. You ought to thank God you've got enough light to follow the right way and got enough sense to keep you out of trouble from, from, and from the word of God and the things of God. Amen. Lord have mercy. I'm, hey, listen, there's they, thousands of churches, thousands of churches built in this country because people believed and preached the word of God. America's faith. I can't tell you all the stories Lord, I heard Ralph Sexton say, Ralph Sr., many, many years ago, I was friends with him. I had him preach for me many times. This old Dr. Ralph Sexton Sr., and I am Ralph Jr. too, his son, friends with him. And Ralph said many years ago, he said, you can take a map of the United States like this, and you can put a compass, point it down on Asheville, North Carolina. And he said, you draw a circle of 150 miles from Asheville, that takes in here down to Winston-Salem, up to Chattanooga, Kingsport, Bristol, Johnson City, around in that area, Knoxville, and then down to uh, Spartanburg, Greenville, that spot, that spot. Have you wondered why the weirdos have come to Asheville in the last few years? The devil sent them there. And if you think it's cool, you're a weirdo. I remember going to Asheville 25 years ago. It ain't like going there now. Lord, there's old shouting women in every church and there's Bible everywhere you look. Now, Lord, you don't know if you're in, you don't know where you're at, San Francisco or, or where you, when you go down the street, there are crazy people beating bongo drums, channeling up demons. 
I tell you, he said there's more prayer. That's why daddy, he come down here from West Virginia and they finally talked to him. He said, man, don't stand a chance around here. You shake a bus and three or four preachers will fall out of it. And that's true. I tell you, we ought to thank God. We ought to thank God he put us right here smack dab on the buckle of the Bible belt. I'm glad that I got to live here. I'm glad my mom was from Spruce Pine, knew God and knew the right way and knew the right spirit. And I got around old fashioned preachers. I wouldn't take every bit of the money in this world if you piled it up right here and said trade it for your heritage and what God's done for you I would not laugh at you listen there's no amount of money in the world worth what God's done for us here in this part of the country number three I'm going to talk about America's failure liberty is not the right to do as you please contrary to what some people think. Liberty is the opportunity to do what you ought. One more time. Liberty is not the right to do as you please. You can't say, well, I got liberty, so I just go out and do anything I want. No. As one fellow said, your liberty ends where my nose begins. So you can't just have liberty to do anything. There's limits, and it only works when people do what they're supposed to. It's sad to say this morning, but I'm going to report it to you. Back in the 50s, things began to change. Our country was blessed like no other country's ever been blessed before. The Industrial Revolution, people was working in factories. Making, that's what they call the American dream. Man get a job working in the factory. He bought him a little piece of land out here. He got him a good wife, raised a few children, and they stayed together and raised them children. And, and then they retired and had their grandkids come over. And, and life was good, buddy. Life was good. And a lot of the, the Andy Griffith age there. But I'm going to tell you something. Demons begin to work. And the boy let them out in 1955. A disc jockey in Cleveland, Ohio, coined the phrase rock and roll. That's where it came from. Most people have no idea what it means. If you, did, if you knew what it means, you wouldn't say there's Christian rock and roll. Uh, 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 and listen, brother, uh, that old boy told that phrase, and he said this, ACDC knew what it means because ACDC wrote a song called Let There Be Rock, mimicking the Bible, let there be this, let there be that. And it said, quote, back in 1955, man didn't know about a rock and roll show and all that jive. The white man had the smarts the black man had the blues. No one knew what they were going to do, but Tchaikovsky, a composer, German composer, had the news. Let there be guitar. Let there be, uh, you know, uh, let there be this, let there be that. Let there be rock. And rock and roll was born. And it came up through the, from the, uh, through, uh, uh, from the south, southern Haiti and down in there, up through New Orleans, and began to infiltrate this country. And you know what happened? Things begin to change. Don McLean wrote about it and he said he don't even know where the words to this song came from. You've all heard it. It's an old song now, but it, it defined. A spirit gave him the words and he said this. Bye, bye, Miss American Pie. Drove my Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. You say, I love that song. Yeah, well, uh, just listen a second. That song was written about the death of God. And that rock and roll would take over the world. No, it wasn't. It was not about this singer who died. That's just his first secondary meaning. He was dictated the words. I went down to the sacred store, Christian bookstore, where I'd heard the music played before and the man there said the music wouldn't play. The children laughed and cried. Steps were broken. The church bells all were broken. Three men I admired the most, the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. They took the last train for the coast singing this will be the day that I die. This will be the day that I die. Singing by, what's American pie? Pie in the sky! It's heaven. Don't give me that pie in the sky. We don't want that no more. We want a new generation. Well, I'm telling you, the devil was unleashed on our country. The very next few years, our Supreme Court in 1962 
made a bad decision. There are three decisions that sent this country into a tailspin. All three of them were made by the Supreme Court. That's why they're fussing about that Supreme Court so much because them people decide what is and what ain't. Them people decide what we do and what we can do and what we can't do. And buddy, you, we're fixing to have a war here in the next few months in this country because of that Supreme Court judge uh, retiring in, in here in a few weeks and then they're gonna put another one in here and the Supreme Court made three decisions that sent our country down toward hell. Number one, in, in, uh, in 1962, they voted six to one that prayer and the Bible was to be taken out of the public school system. For years and years and years, they were they could pray at school, kids, the Gideons give out Bibles, no more. Madeline Murray O'Hara protested. She was an atheist, and because of the pressure of that woman, school uh, had to get up their, their Bibles. And then, you know what happened to her? By the way, I don't know if you ever know what happened to that woman or not, but her son that she was protesting, not wanting to be around the Bible, uh, the joke was on her, buddy. God saved that old boy and called him to preach. And he went everywhere giving his testimony and she wound up, no tell, they disappeared. Out dead in the desert somewhere or something, nobody knows what happened to her. I'm telling you, well, you, you watch these people that fight God. You watch these people stand against God. They fall hard and they fall fast. And sooner or later, brother, uh, their foot shall slide in due time. When somebody takes a stand against that book, somebody takes a stand against what's right, you just watch them a few years, don't get all excited, don't go crazy because it's summer of 2018 and go wild and get drunk and act stupid and all that. I'm telling you, you better watch your step because America failed. The Bible was out. The second one they did was in 1973. The Supreme Court, you know it as Roe versus Wade, and the Supreme Court said again that a woman can terminate, kill, that baby that's inside her body. I do not have time to preach on that this morning. I've got a lot of that in other messages. He mentioned it this morning, Sunday school. But there is there is scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture that call an unborn child a child and a baby. It is not a tissue. It is not a, a wart. It is not just a mass that a woman has. You say, well, it's my body. I've heard that till I'm sick of it. It's my body. I have a right to do it. Yeah, that's right. That's your body. But that baby's body is the baby's body. You can kill yourself if you want to, but you don't have a right to kill the baby. Amen? I guarantee you every one of them people that believe in abortion don't, don't, is glad their mama didn't have one. Amen? It's, it's a wicked, wicked outfit. I, I, I heard this thing this, this past week. It was on the news, and they're fussing about this immigration policy. I don't have time to get in all of that. You need to come to church to get your head straight on stuff like that. That's why you need to come to church. It makes you think straight. And you know, that immigration policy is basically this. They're getting on the news saying, oh, oh, our government's so mean. They're so mean. They're separating these kids from their families. How awful, how mean. Well, that ain't exactly the way it works, people. If a person comes to the country illegally, they are breaking the law and they should be detained. How hard is it for you to figure that out? You know why they won't let all the illegal aliens in the country? Two reasons. These people are against America and want anarchy. And two, they all vote Democrat. I ain't politicking for nobody. Like he said, both parties are corrupt. I think it's a disgrace that our president we got right now cusses on TV and makes people think it's hard. That's a disgrace. He ought to be ashamed of himself. I respect him as my president. And I agree with him on this issue. But I'm telling you this morning, listen to me, some of y'all getting a little nervous now. It's preaching time. And all God's people said, well, this, ain't, this, ain't the, this ain't the house of senate representative, brother. This is God's house where we preach the truth. Amen? Amen? Oh, it's awful. They're separating those children from, listen, if a man's illegal and he's trying to sneak in the country illegally and he brings a kid with him, he knows he can get in. You say, well, can they separate? Every day in this country, there are men go to jail separated from their kids every day. You hate it, you wish you didn't have to do it, but we do it every day. What a bunch of hypocrites. Where are those same liberals 
at the abortion clinic on the what about them poor little innocent children? Where are you at, liberals? Where are you at? You don't care about them little children. You want to advance your sexual lifestyle. That's what you're after. Well, he's he's preaching now, y'all. Amen. The third mistake our Supreme Court made was June 2015. The first one is 1962, kicking the Bible out. The second one was 1973, making abortion legal. And the third one is 2015, when our country sanctioned same-sex marriage. Nothing personal. I don't hate nobody. I love everybody. If you're in that lifestyle, you come. Up, I'll help you all I can. We'll get down here and we'll pray all evening. Don't you accuse me of hate. They hate us way worse than why we feel about them. Way worse. They spit on preachers in Asheville. Spit on them while he's out preaching. Where's their rights? Some of y'all getting a little nervous and I can tell you've been more time on TV and your wicked friends than you are reading your Bible. That's your problem right there. You're turning into a left-wing Christian, whatever in a Sam Hill that is. That's like saying you're a good devil. The First Baptist Church of Dallas, Texas was having a big service today. I think it's today. And they put up signs all over in Dallas and here's all it said. America is a Christian nation. That's all it said. And the, gut, the mayor got on them. The pressure come on. And, the, and they made them take the signs down. Made the sign company take the signs down. They said, it causes division. Now you got a sign, got a big sign around it. We're three men hugging each other. Don't that cause division? That hurts our feelings. We're offended by that. Hmm. Better go on right quick. Get this license. Some of y'all are going to have a heart attack before we get out of here. Number four. Number four. I'm going to talk about America's future. I'm going to predict the future. You say, Brother Danny, you're a prophet. Nope. You can predict the future. Yep. I'm going to predict America's future. It's going to be one of two things. And I have Bible scriptures that say both these things. One verse is Psalm 917. The other verse is 2 Chronicles 714. Psalm 917 said, The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. America's headed that direction. 2 Chronicles 714 said, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, you say, well, he ain't talking about America. I, I know that, I know that, I know, I ain't stupid. I've been reading the Bible longer than most of y'all been alive. I, I know he's talking about Israel. But the principle is still the same. I'm telling you, if every Christian in America, if half the Christians of America would get on our face and pray and fast and God, listen, God Almighty's still able to do what he ever could do. I'm encouraged, I'm encouraged by by a lot of churches that are popping up. I, I see encouragement, a lot of these young preachers that are coming on, like CT and these boys. I thank God for young men like that. God's raising up and we're seeing revival fires break out here and there. And you ought to thank God for it. Thank God, brother. They might reach one of my grandkids one of these days. Thank God he's blessing them. Thank God these churches going out soul winning. Thank God these churches believe. Listen, there's people sitting right here this morning that got up at 6 and 6.30 and got on an old bus out here at 8 o'clock and rode that old bus and will ride it unair conditioned till 2 o'clock this evening to bring boys and girls to church and people that say, hey, I may not be able to do much, but I want to do my part to save this country. God's people do what they're supposed to. Hey, no tell them what God's allowed them to do. Revival fires have saved nations before. God is merciful. We was in a store this week. I mean, uh, and Kelly, was, she wasn't with me in this store. And I went in a store and I was looking at some, trying on a pair of pants. And went back there, you know, they give you a little, little number or something. How many you got? Well, I got this one pair right here. And I ain't got nothing stuffed in that you can tell by looking at me. And so I go in there, and I came out, and I said, ma'am, I always do this. I said, ma'am, you remember, Jesus loves you. And she looked at me like, 
I bet I had five people tell me this this week. I needed that. I needed that. Now, it don't cost you a dime to do that. It don't cost you a penny to do that. And I said, ma'am, you know Jesus loves you. And he, she said, I know, I know. He'll, he'll, and when my father, he'll be my father when I ain't got no father. I said, the Bible says it like this. When my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. He's your best friend. And there was a Spanish lady over here shopping. And I said, ma'am, I'll see you later. And I walked back to the store. And about five minutes later, I passed that Spanish lady. And she said, thank you for the message. I didn't know she was listening. And I said, you're welcome, ma'am. He's your best friend. That ain't much. It don't cost you a penny to tell people there's a God in heaven that loves them and cares about them. Listen, if my people, which are called by my name, there's enough professing Christians in this country, we could get anything done we, if, if people get right with God. Hey, hey, there's supposed to be a difference in us and them people out there in the world. We're supposed to care. We're supposed to care. We're supposed to care. Every civilization in history that has forgotten God and went after pleasure has been destroyed. Everyone. There is not one exception. And America is no exception either. The only thing that's holding the judgment of God off this nation this morning is Christian people still here. America's future, that depends on us, y'all. If you want my personal opinion, and I hope I'm wrong, I don't think we're going to have a national revival. I hope I'm wrong. But our country has a Officially decided, we don't want that. We'll not have this man to reign over us. You're, div- you're causing division. You people are judgmental. We want that. But I tell you, there ain't nothing in this book that says you can't have a personal revival. We can't have a church revival. We can't have a community revival. Nowhere in this book. God's still on his throne. I wish, I wish there's enough people in here Lord, we could have the office, we could double our bus ministry if everybody in here, if you just care, you just care. I, I can't, listen, while we was down there, while we was, this week, our, Kelly's phone rang, DSS. So we got a five-year-old, nowhere to go. Can y'all take him? I said, well, we got 12 at the house this week. We got camp the week after that. I said, I don't, I don't know, you know, I'm all for helping people. I mean, I don't think you, my pastor taught me God won't hold it against you for trying to help people. You say, well, I can't afford it. That might be why you're broke all the time. You're a tightwad. You give. You give. You try to help somebody. It ain't going to matter about all this other stuff one day. All it's going to matter. Listen, there's a little kid right now. Half people in here, Lord, they, them, they're begging for foster parents, begging for them. There's every week, we've got a five-year-old. God, it's sad. Mama's on drugs. Mama's in jail. Mama's doing that. And God's people need to care about them, the little boys and girls. What about their bus kids? What about our bus kids? What about our bus kids? Our church might be the only hope some of them's got. There's some sitting here this morning if it were not for Shining Light Baptist Church. And I'm telling you this morning, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but it's churches like this right here that reach out in the community and run buses and knock on people's doors. That's the hope for our country if there is any hope in this nation today. Thank God there's some churches like this. I'm glad I go to a church where we knock on hundreds of doors every week. I'm glad. I'm glad I put my money in a church where they're knocking on hundreds of doors every week. And this Saturday, we're gonna probably knock on 500 if it's God's will, this coming Saturday. That's the answer to our country. The answer to our country is not whine and complain about politics and who's in office. Listen, that bunch of nuts out there, if they can't straighten out this country, only God can get us out of the mess we're in. Let's pray about that future of America. I'll give you my heart. There's some bad things going on in this country. There's satanic temples where they worship the devil. When you see a truck going down the road the size of a U-Haul truck, not a U-Haul, the size of one like that that's unmarked, there could be eight or ten little girls in there getting sold. I mean, it's everywhere or boys. There's kids right here in this church today 
being abused. The only hope our country's got is for Christian people like me and you to get on our knees and say, God, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something. I'm, I'm not just going to sit around and eat and sleep and let my country just go to hell. You've been so good to me, I'm willing to do something for you. Come on, let's stand this morning. Ever, they're coming to get a song. I want you to stand by your head, please. Maybe God spoke to your heart this morning. Maybe the Lord has spoke to your heart. And maybe you're here this morning and you say, Brother Danny, I need to do my part. And I'm going to get out of my seat. And I'm going to go down there to that altar. And I'm going to ask God to work in my life. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never been saved. You don't want to go to hell when you die, my friend. Maybe you need to come down here and get your heart right. Maybe there's Christian people who need to meet me here this morning. You know what, preacher? I'll help. I'll help. I'll do something. It may not change the world, but I want to help. Come on. Some are coming right now. Some are coming right now. Just get out of your seat. Come on, Christians. Let's get in this altar this morning. Say, Pre- preacher, I want to do my part. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit. God help us. Lord, bless us this morning. Give us that that we need. Lord, have mercy on our country. Have mercy on churches. Have mercy on families, on individuals. Oh, God, bless us again. God, send it one more time. Send old Holy Ghost revival one more time. We'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Let's sing. Softly Amen. and tenderly, Amen. Jesus is Will you come this morning? Will you come this morning, friend? Calling for you and for, and for me. For me. Amen. See on the poor. He's waiting. He's waiting and watching. Watching for you. He's watching for you. For me. Everybody, let's sing to him. Come home. Come home. Come on home this morning. Come on home this morning. Ye who are weary, come home. Amen. Hallelujah. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling. Oh, sinner. Come on home. Come on, homeless. If you need to come, young man, come on right now, everybody. Why should we, why should we tarry when Jesus, when Jesus is pleading, pleading. Amen. pleading for you and for me? Amen. Amen. Say it now. Why should we linger and heed not his mercy? Mercy for you. For me. Everybody, everybody, ready? Come home. Sing it now. Come, Come home. home. Amen. Ye who are weary, come home. Will you come on home this morning. Come on home. answer to every problem. You listening? The answer to every problem in your life is the first thing to do. Get it right with God. Anything. I don't care what your mess is. Get right with God first. Totally right with God. Then you're ready to work on everything else. Try it. Physical, spiritual, married, financial. I don't care what your problem is first thing you do is get right with God. Then work on everything. So you better watch trying to straighten everybody else out. Get your own heart right with God. Then you can help other people. Amen. Good advice. All right. Amen. Well, it's going to be warm this evening, y'all, so you better stay in, slip on in here about 5.45 this evening. We're going to have important service tonight. I've got a message that I think everybody in here needs. If the Lord don't change my mind, I'm talking to you how 
I'm telling you how to get close to the Lord tonight. So don't miss tonight's service. And then we're going to have a meeting on how and what all we're going to do next Sunday for the big day. Now, if you're going to camp, make sure.